January 6th will of course be the much anticipated return of Virgil Ortiz Jr. And of course this will be a new division as he will be moving up from 147 to 154 to fight Frederick Lawson. Now of course there are a lot of questions, a lot of what ifs in this fight for the sole fact that Ortiz has had a humongous layoff, like year layoff. Has not fought a single opponent. His last opponent was McKinson. Which, no offense to McKinson, not really the best opponent. Had no power, not really much of a threat to Ortiz, but you know, whatever. And also for the, for, for the sole fact that the reason he couldn't fight was due to health reasons, right? A health condition that basically almost killed him, like twice. Actually, I think three times at this point. So, of course, they realize, okay, 147, not the weight class. Let's move up. Uh, the first on the agenda, Davis versus Barroso. As most people know, Barroso was basically whooping Roley until Roley landed zero shots and they stopped the fight. So, that says that says a lot. But, of course, you have Ismael Barroso, who, is, who also looks exactly kind of like Virgil Ortiz's opponent, but we'll get to that later. Before losing to Broly via controversial TKO, which is one of the dumbest stoppages like of all time. He had a record of 24 and 3 with two draws, 22 by knockout, two by knockout, two losses by way of knockout, and of course two draws. Of course, you look at his opponents. His opponents do not look that good. I mean, he did beat Ulysses Jr., who was a decent opponent. Everyone else, not so much. Especially losing to a 4 and 0 guy. Via knockout. But of course, besides his performance against Roley, you have O'Hara Davis being 25 and 2 with 18 knockouts and one loss via way of knockout, which is actually interesting. I actually thought this guy was undefeated, but I guess not. But of course, they were actually set to fight on the Ryan Garcia undercard until I think Davis's passport or visa got denied or something. Like, bro, why the hell you even announce it? Oh man, they're gonna fight. Oh, no, never mind, I got denied. So why'd you even announce it then? But whatever. Of course, he has been on a tear on a super lightweight division. You look at his record, god damn, I mean, I mean some non-seller opponents, but some good opponents as well. But of course, his last loss was a unanimous decision to Jack Catterall. Most people know him as the guy that should have been undisputed by beating Josh Taylor, but womp womp. And of course, speaking of Josh Taylor, that one TKO loss came to a 9-0 and Josh Taylor. In the seventh round, that is crazy. This man has lost to nothing but the top opponents. Now that being said, who are y'all winning? It's gonna, it's gonna be Davis. I mean, Barroso is forty. This man, this man is old as hell. He had his one shot. He had his one shot of becoming champion, and he should have been champion. Okay, not say should have, because there were still four more rounds in the fight. But like you know, but considering how the fight was going, it, Barroso was gonna win, most likely. And he got robbed of that. So, unfortunately, he will have to get knocked out against Davis. I, yeah, I just don't see Barroso getting it done. I think he's too old. I think the only reason why he did... I think everyone knows the only reason why he did so well against Roley was because, well, Roley was shell-shocked from the Davis fight. So, you know, when you get knocked out like that after basically winning the fight, it doesn't, and it doesn't look good, right? It doesn't feel good at all. But, of course, I got Davis winning the WBA... Reg, I think it's the regular title... By defeating Barroso, 8th round stoppage. And this one's going to be a little bit more legitimate than the Roley stoppage loss. So, you know, it's going to be it's gonna be real bad, you know, seeing an old man get his ass whipped. But, you know, that's just life. You know, you got your one shot, they robbed you, and now you're going to have to just never touch gold again. Or even come close to touching gold. Of course, they put him in there with Frederick Lawson, who is 30-3 with 22 knockouts and 3 losses by way of knockout. He has pop. He has quite a bit of pop. So that's going to be a very interesting thing for Ortiz to deal with. And he is coming off of a two-fight win streak against decent opponents. I mean, the first one was after a, a basically a year layoff against a 16-11 opponent, which is not that bad. I mean, it's all right, but it's a comeback fight after losing via KO. So, you know, it says a lot. But his last opponent was a 16-1-1 and one and one opponent. That is very nice. And that opponent himself had quite a bit of pop. And, of course, that guy only lost to one other opponent, that being Blair Cobbs. 
Most people know Blair Cobbs as the man who ran his mouth and then got knocked out by Alexis Rocha. So, yeah, says a lot. But anyways, Ortiz, of course, is the 100% knockout artist with 19 wins, 0 losses, and 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Of course, his past opponents have not. I mean, they've been all right. You know, you look at his past opponents, and there's really nothing too much. He did fight an undefeated opponent in his last fight. But that undefeated opponent had, like, no power. And as we figured out literally not too long ago, it doesn't matter how great you are. If you're fighting another great fighter with way more power than you, it's not going to end well for you. So, you know, says a lot. And, of course, he was set to fight San Yonis three times. But, of course, Ortiz postponed it, and then San Yonis postponed it due to health reasons for both of them. And then it happened again. So, you know, they realized, yeah, well, let's, let's not put Ortiz's health at risk now. Let's just... Move him up. Which, you know, like I said, he hasn't fought since August of 2022. Basically a year and maybe like two months layoff. Maybe three months. Quite a bit of time. And of course, like I said, against a man with no power in McKinson. Like I said, no offense to McKinson. Didn't really pose a big threat. But Lawson has quite a bit of pop. And we have seen Ortiz in trouble. Especially the fight before the McKinson fight against Mean Machine. Who, But then again... Mean Machine also hurt and unofficially dropped Terrence Crawford as well, so that says a lot. So this will, of course, be a very interesting fight. Year off, new weight class against a man with pop. Is it really going to be like that? No, to be honest. I thought that. I thought, oh, okay, Lawson is going to, you know, put the beats on Ortiz. Maybe not win, but definitely make him look very vulnerable. Until you realize Lawson, like I said, all three knock, all three losses came via knockout. His first loss came to Kevin Bezier, Juan Ruiz, and Charles Hatley. Hatley, my man. How do you lose to Hatley? But, like I said, he has two fights afterwards. Decent opponents. He does He does have a huge chance of upsetting Ortiz. But I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, I think his chin's going to fail on him, especially against someone like Ortiz. Even though he is from 147, so, you know, power might be a little different. He will be at a much healthier weight class, so, you know, it's just going to not end well for Lawson. I do think with his power, I do think he stays around for at least round nine. I do think he has a, he has a chance of making it in the second half of the fight, but making it to the end, no, I don't think so. I think he gets broken down. But then again, like I said, what if year layoff in a new weight class says a lot. But then again, you know, 154, although... Is a different weight class. It's not that bad of a weight class either. There are quite a bit of opponents for Ortiz, especially after this fight. Of course, you got Lubin, Ramos. That's about it. That's all I can think about at the top of my head. I mean, you got the champions, but he's definitely not finding a champion right now. I mean, Mendoza is also there. Fandora. They chilling. But, of course, I do think this is just going to be an opponent that looks good on paper. You see his record. You see his knockouts. See who he fought. You think, oh, this is a very good fighter. And then you realize his chin's not there. 100% knockout loss ratio is not good at all. Especially when it's three. It's not like, oh, one loss and then came by with knockout. No, all three of them came by knockout. That's not good. He's going to get chin checked and he's just, he just going to not end well. But then again, it is a comeback fight for Ortiz. So you're not expecting him to fight a power puncher with a chin. Because that then Ortiz would have lost 100%. But, you know, whatever. You know, where everyone's trying to see what's going to happen to the 154-pound division. You know, is everyone going to be like... Is everyone going to be like, oh, man, this Ortiz, man, he's still as powerful as he was at 147. We have to watch out for him. Or, okay, so now he kind of just looks like a regular old guy. He don't look unstoppable anymore. But anyways, hope you enjoy this video. Next video, of course, be the January 13th bout between the unified light heavyweight world champion Arthur Bitterbeev versus Callum Smith. Very interesting fight. But anyways, I'll catch you in the next one.